Hi, my name is Jessica Aju, avid agility instructor, trainer, competitor, and judge. I guess you could say I'm an agility addict. I want to introduce you to this fabulous sport that highlights the connection between people and dogs. Agility is so much fun. The dogs love it, people love it, and it has a somewhat addicting quality about it, so consider yourselves warned. The first time I saw agility was around 1999. And I saw it on TV and my thoughts were, oh my God, it's like horses, but it's dogs. Uh, I jumped right on the internet, did a little research and found out that it's actually an, an organized sport and there exists dog training schools and clubs that you can go sign up and take some lessons. Needless to say, I signed right up and I've had the privilege of doing agility with many different dogs ever since. I think the coolest thing about agility is that most any dog can do it. Dogs of all sizes, breeds, and backgrounds can learn agility, and most can even compete. My very first agility dog was a mutt named Mocha that my family had adopted from the local SPCA. Uh, I thought we'd just have some fun, uh, and that's how everybody starts. Uh, soon enough, I was attending competitions, and it just escalated from there. <laughs> Little did I know where this agility journey would take me. So. We're going to talk a little bit about what actually the sport entails and enjoy. The game of agility consists of an obstacle course, which the handler and the dog must navigate through as fast and as accurately as possible. The dog performs the obstacles and the handler gives the directions. In a way, we humans are learning to speak dog language when we are learning agility because dogs respond most naturally to body language, not English. Running a course is the final product. Before that, the dogs must learn how to perform the various obstacles and the handler must learn how to give timely cues to tell the dog where he's going. It really is a partnership, especially when the dogs are running up to speeds over seven yards a second. Yes, it does happen. In later blogs, we'll talk more about the training involved in agility, but first I want to give an overview of its aspects as a sport. You can participate in agility in many ways, at home playing in your backyard, taking lessons at a club or a training school, attending seminars, and yes, attending competitions, which are frequently referred to as trials. The trials are sanctioned by a variety of parent organizations which set the rules for their programs and award titles for the team's accomplishments. Championship titles make for big ribbons. National championships make for even more bling. When you start competing, you begin in novice or beginner level. As you qualify or earn cues, you move up to intermediate or advanced, and then finally on to excellent and masters. Each organization has their own names for the various levels. The biggest difference between the levels is the complexity of the course and to a degree which obstacles are being tested. This brings us to the agility obstacles. Jumps include the single jump, spread jumps, the wall, a long jump, and of course the tire. The tunnels, they're often a favorite of the dogs because they can just zip through them and it excites them. The weaves are always a crowd favorite and involve the dog going back and forth through a set of 12 poles in a specific pattern each time. Though 12 poles is the norm, it is possible to only see six. The contact obstacles are the ones that the dogs must climb on. The table, in which the dog must stay put for five seconds. The A-frame. The dog walk, or maybe the dog run, haha. <laughs> the seesaw, or it's also called the teeter. You'll notice that the end of the boards are painted a different color. The rules stipulate that the dogs must touch this contact zone with at least one toe in order not to incur a fault. So when you put all these obstacles together, you get the whole course. There are different classes in agility competitions, each testing slightly different skills. Jumpers involves only jumps and tunnels and sometimes the weave pulls. The standard class has all the obstacles, contacts, and everything. Usually the team that goes clean, meaning has no fault, and who has the fastest time wins. There also exist game classes that are based on point accumulation, strategy, or distance challenges. This is when the handler must direct the dog through a sequence while staying behind a line at a set distance away. 
These are always exciting classes because the handler can make up his own course to highlight his dog's skills. The games classes test not only smart planning, but also some exceptional dog training skills. The agility courses are designed by the judge. On the day of the competition, the handlers are usually given a map, which is a bird's eye view of the course on paper so that they can learn the pattern of the course. The handlers are then given the opportunity to walk the course without their dogs so that they can make their strategy. When it's time to run, the dogs and handlers give it their best shot. The judge watches each team to determine if there are any faults. Common calls include off courses, knocking bars, or in this case, knocking the stanchion, missed contacts, missed weave pull entries, and refusals. So as you can see, there are many things that could go wrong during an agility run, and things don't always go as planned. But really, running cleanly is not the important part about agility. Yes, it's extra special when you earn a title you've been working for and downright exhilarating when you win a competition. But ultimately, it's the partnership and connection between you and your dog, working towards a common goal that really matters. Running agility creates a rush for both you and your dog. It's not only exciting, but it's super fun. That is the beauty of agility and why I believe agility has become one of the most popular and fastest growing dog sports. Welcome, have fun, and cherish every moment you can with your best friend.